we're, <laughs> we're starting strong. Chicago, New Hampshire, Dover, you started strong last year, the defending champ, of course. Uh, Three-time champion. I guess everybody's even, right? When we start here, is that how you approach it? Or is this first race in the chase, you have a little strategy lined up? Well, it's, you pretty much approach it like you do any other week. I mean, it's uh, the, the theory is the higher you finish, the more points you get still. It never has changed. So uh, you, you pretty much approach it the same and go out and do everything you can to win the race. But compared to last year, right, when you were like, you hadn't won yet, and all of a sudden, boom, you start off and started to change the mindset maybe of some of the competitors. I think you got into some guys' heads there a little bit. Well, I, I think probably what everybody already knew, but what really showed up last year is that you know, the, the difference of winning the championship was one point. So, uh, you know, it, it literally one point either way could have changed it. And uh, so I, I think everybody's more conscious of if you can lead one lap or if you can lead the most laps or if you're if you're having a bad day, you get in a wreck and you can gain one position on the track. I mean, you're going to do everything you can to, to get every single point you can get. And right. you're going to have to do that for 10 weeks. Even wrecking your mother, I think. Or somebody else's mother, right? I was aiming for you, but I had to settle for my mom. <laughs> he was aiming for me in the parking lot. I had to kind of weave through people. Tony, let me ask you, when, when you're going, I know you're worried about yourself in the, each of these, but do you look at who else is good at that particular track when you know it's just the, you know, the 12 drivers battling for the championship? Uh, you know, the biggest thing, you've got to worry about yourself more than anything. I mean, it's, they're all going to be good. I mean, there's guys that... Uh, there's none of these guys up here that really are weak at mile and a half tracks. I mean, that, that's why they're up yeah, here. Right. It's because we run so many mile and a half. So, uh, you know, when you when you look at those races, I mean, it's, there's a lot of emphasis on it because you do spend so many uh, weekends a year at mile and a half tracks that you know these guys are all going to be all good right. at it. I did okay. want to mention, you know, Tony and, and Darian Grubb, you know, crew chiefs, they're, they're behind the scenes. You guys always take care of your crew chiefs, and they help you do the job so well. We, we see him in the background, but Darian Grubb obviously is with you now, won a championship with, with Tony. So, Thank you for that, so, sir. Uh, <laughs> and, and Tony, I thought you, you handled that well, you know, situations, we all have things behind the scenes, so, uh, but you've had enough success to get back into this thing. Are you thinking at all about what Darian might be helping Denny with here in the chase that he knows about you? No, because I, I got Greg Zipidelli from over at Gibbs, so I know what they're doing. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, you, you always, evaluate and try to figure out what you can do to make things better and and you know like we mentioned at the end of the year i mean our decision was made before the chase even started so uh you know there were reasons that we got to that point and, and ma had made that decision but uh you know it's we knew i knew when i heard that he was going to work with denny i knew they were going to be a good combination together because of how they approach things so uh and their, their track record this year speaks for itself we we have to keep things very simple with the way when we're talking on during the race and and uh, just trying to to hear him but it's um you know it's easy i mean you know it's just like the drivers at this level the crew chiefs got to this level because they're good at what they do and uh, you know you don't get good with a crew chief without learning how to communicate with them so uh you know it's it's pretty easy to deal with these guys i mean there's times when we all disagree on what we're going to do when we get there but still it's kind of like matt said i mean we got the steering wheel in our hands so we get we get some part of the decision making process but then when we get in the pit box they get the rest of it and you know and it's it's kind of like clint said and the fact that i'm actually back in clint up on this is scary in itself <laughs> but sorry <laughs> but he's right i mean the the thing is there's so many variables that that you guys don't understand that can happen on a race day i mean we can we can do everything right as drivers. The pit crew can do everything right. Uh, there's still 42 other variables. There's weather, there's, you know, electronics. There's all kinds of things that can go wrong. And, uh, you know, to have 12 drivers up here like this with 12 great teams, it's, you, you can't predict what's gonna happen. You can't, uh, you can't say that this is the one thing I have to do or don't have to do or have to watch against. I mean, there's just, I don't even know how many laps there are in the chase or how many miles there are in the chase, but that's a lot of stuff going on in the next 10 weeks. And, uh, you know, the, the first part of it, it's of an honor just to be up here and make this chase. You look at guys that have missed it and, and how many good organizations aren't here. It's an honor to be part of the 12 guys up here today. But uh, there's just a lot of things that can go wrong, and you have to do everything right. And, and you know, in the eight years that we've had the chase, there hasn't been two years exactly the same. So that's there's right. no blueprint. There's no set way of doing it. There was five of them. There were five of them that the outcome came <laughs> that were the same, but, right. but how he got there was a little different. So, um, you know, it, it's hard. It's really hard for us to sit up here and, you know, Dale Jr.'s answer is staying on the gas. I wish that was the only thing I had to worry about doing. 
because it'd be a lot easier. But, um, you know, it, it's hard because all of us are standing on the gas every week. And it's, uh, it's probably the most competitive that this sport has ever been. So uh, the, the window of error for us is so small to, you know, if you make a mistake, the, the reality of how much it hurts you at the end of the day is huge. So you really have to be on your game because, you know, you look it up here, I mean, these, these guys can all put together a good 10 week stretch. I mean, you just, you can't, you can't lay down. I mean, you, you've got to put 10 good weeks together.